All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the standard 2022 MCA Awards. I am here with Kisada. Uh, this is me, Half Slash, and blah, 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 and let's just get on with it. How are you doing, Kisada? I'm doing great. How are you today, Halfie? I I am good. I'm ready to talk about maps. Uh, it is 2022. Uh, uh, wow, the years have gone by. Um, yeah. Not very much time has passed from our, our last time we were here. We no are kidding. On we time. Actually, we're actually on time. I couldn't believe it. I, 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 I had to celebrate my excitement by just, you know, pinging, uh, pinging people in general. Like, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is actually happening. <laughs> like, oh, boy. Well, we got to. Well, I guess it's like we shouldn't waste too much time then because it's like, you know, we. We we can only get faster if we get through the stream faster. <laughs> yeah. Just as a reminder, before we get into it, I would like to refresh your memory on the categories that we will be going over today. So on the mapping side, we're going to have best hit sounding, best slider tech, best unorthodox gimmick, best complex rhythm sling, best small circles, best vanilla, best high PM high bpm slash alternator best collab best marathon and then finally the grand award and for the user categories we're going to have outstanding contributor most promising best hit sounder best modder best mapper and grand award and with that out of the way we can get straight into it I believe our first category on the table is going to be best hit sounding for mapping. And if we could get a transition. Loading. Loading. <laughs> happens. Loading. <laughs> I'm about to get timed out on Discord, but it's loading. It's okay, guys. It's the start of the stream. Once I get into it, we'll be oh, able to flow to the next one. Okay, so our first map in third place is going to be I Am by Theocracy. This is mapped by I Must Decrease, which you better might better know as Zexar. He's a quite a storied mapper. He's got a long history in Osu. Um, you probably may know him better recently as for the work he does on the PP algorithm, but he is also a mapper and he got a map ranked in 2022. This is it right here. So the hit something for this map is actually quite interesting. So the oh, uh, it's got some pretty good samples. There's a key sounded guitar parts in this as well, and there's also some additive stuff. Like, I remember later on, there's stuff like additive chants to match, like, the chorus. So, lots of pretty good stuff in here. Oh, and also the hit sounding on this was primarily done by Fox. I, uh, I was not expecting, uh, to see this map anywhere. Um, you know, it's just like, this is a very interesting map just to come out because it's like, We'd previously seen only Zexar stuff. This is the first one since uh, his, uh, you know, awakening, as he would call it, and return to Osu. So, um, definitely went all out on it. And uh, it's nice to, you know, get someone else on board to do these hit sounds uh, when you know that they can just give it their all and you can kind of just focus on the, the rest of the experience. So. Yeah, definitely a very interesting song choice. Not something I'd expect given Zexar's past output, but this is the sort of music he really enjoys now, and he put a lot of effort into it, and it really shows. Yeah. All right, with that out of the way, we can get to the second place entry, I believe. And this is going to be... <laughs> Yes, here we go. This is Kagari Bito uh, by F9, and this is mapped by Ponbot. Uh, the, the hit sounding here was primarily done by Scub Domino, who is a perennial 
I would say, participant in this on the hit sounding side, of course. Scub Domino himself is multi-talented. He shows up in the mapping categories as well, but he's definitely won a lot of awards in hit sounding. Uh, he was the best hit sounder for NCA 2020 and 2021, so he definitely does a lot of good stuff that resonates with our voters. And this, in particular, really plays to Scub's uh, strengths as a hit sounder. Uh, particularly the excellent key sounding he does uh, on the piano, which I would say is his greatest strength. It really enhances uh, the back melody of the song. Yeah, um, Scuff's been uh, yeah, Scuff's been killing it on hit sounds. I was like, his first thing pretty much when he stepped onto the game was you know putting effort into hit sounds because coming from like uh, I think uh, he said Black MIDI community or something. Uh, very very much a uh, very familiar with a lot of these samples um and it's not just the key sounding on this map that it's just a generally really good sample choice a song like this has uh, enough complex instrumentals that you can kind of go all out on sample choice and it really shows so cool yeah absolutely his sample choice is always on point as well all right okay. anyways we can get to the first place in our best hit sounding category and this is Bing Chillingish uh, by Taraco. This is hosted by Aurorans, um, also known as. Uh, uh, this diff primarily was mapped by My Angel Jeremy. But um, this was key sounded by Diedrich Olsen. Uh, the non key sounded hit sounds were done by Aurorans. So it was, a, it was a joint effort. Uh, this map just, I think I know why it's here and why it won. Uh, it's just absolutely insane on the sample choices here. Lots of additive samples. You've got uh, stuff like Among Us, you know, <laughs> music, Discord Connect and Disconnect notification sound. Lots of memes in this map. This, this, this is like if sent from my iPod recorder was real and ranked. Like, this is, that's, that's the energy I'm getting on this. Holy crap. Yeah, I it really goes all out on the, the wacky samples. Yeah, so here's the thing. So, you know, the second place entry was definitely a lot more about the serious side of hits of key sounding. This is what happens when you use key sounding to make something totally different. Um, it, and it's actually really fitting when you look at it that way, but at the same time, for those of you who wanted a more serious entry to win, well, uh, forget you forget that this is Osu, so... Yeah, and that's not to say that any of the, the hit sample choices are like... They're kind of mean, but they have a purpose here, and they do really enhance the overall uh, set and theme of the the song. So it, it's a it's a good choice regardless. It's fitting. Oh God! All right, uh, I'm not gonna be able to take myself seriously for the rest of this stream if we don't <laughs> if we don't get to the next one. So I think That's we're okay. getting on to uh, best slider tech third entry. Yes, absolutely. Best slider tech is our next category. And in third place, we have, this is a uh, Eagle Stick hosted by Cotton123. This is quite the classic song. This originally, uh, first time I heard this, it had a, a Suka map on it. And it's it's quite nice to see it again in this category, so. Yeah, um, it follows a uh, trend of just seeing more of these Eagle songs, like classic Eagle songs, uh, getting slider tech maps. Um, I saw a tournament custom, I believe, last year by Reform that mapped like hypersonic. So I guess this is following that trend. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just uh, lots of cool slider shapes here. Um, good constructions, good movement. Just lots of uh, very solid maps overall. Yeah, it's a bit hard for me to place this one. Uh, I think the I think the appeal on this one is it's not just the like you know the very curvy like almost graffiti esque aesthetic uh, popularized by uh, quite a few mappers in last year, but it's also just like the mix in of more classical stuff. Like we see a lot of these. Uh, I call them wishbones. Uh, we see some like you know, uh, square type patterning. It's just kind of all mixed together and it all actually contrasts between sections pretty well, so. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right, with that out of the way, we can get to our next entry. And this, by the way, was a tie for third place. So we have this and we have our other third place entry. This is uh, Mistaka by Hesperos. This is a map by Ryusei Aika, or not Ryusei Aika, it's by Asilica. That's what I wanted to say. So this close is a, a very, yeah, very close, you know, just one starts with an R and the other with an A. <laughs> but uh, this is uh, an interesting map. It's got Asilica's very distinct sense of text style. Um, so in particular, when I think about his style, and it shows up in this map as well, is he has a, a very strong focus on uh, curves and circular shapes in his sliders. Um, like what he'll often do is have a really long, super like curvy slider, and he'll just use that to contrast with uh, slower kick sliders over and over again to really pull out the contrast in the, uh, the song. And this also has some really interesting and cool key soundings for uh, some of the synth stuff in it as well. So it's not just a, a solely a map victory, it's, it's got some really neat key sounds as well. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this one uh, got anywhere in the storyboard. Uh, yeah, just because this is silly. The uh, storyboard is quite funny, and I'm I'm a bit sad that none of you voted for this in best storyboard. Shame on you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So the other interesting fun fact about this is, is it was uh, in OWC uh, 2021 as a uh, as a tech map. So. Uh, uh, nice to see that uh, making an appearance here as well. Absolutely. Now I can't get over the the storyboard on this. Like it was it was hard to come up with commentary. I kept laughing at it. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Well. In second place, we have Metamorphos by Lore. This is a map uh, created by Koku Max, and this to me, uh, this is a, a pretty interesting map. So. In a lot of ways, when I think of this map, it's like a bit of a, it's like a cheese sampler. So you've got a lot of different uh, styles and um, constructions of slider aesthetics in here. It's 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 a, basically a text sampler, like a kaleidoscope of different textiles in it. And it's really, really cool to see that. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing. I saw the I saw the uh, tag slider. I don't know if we're gonna see more of these, but yeah, I saw the tag sliders. Saw a lot of just like the usual clean, like you know, straight line, uh, curvy type stuff. Oh yeah, also the slider chains in this really go off. Yeah, I guess it's like in a sense, it's, it feels like a complement to the cotton map we saw earlier, except uh, it's using the grid style for uh, its circle patterning a lot more than its like slider arrangements. So. Mm -hmm. This was also in uh, a, a tournament as well. It was in the Grand Finals HD3 of some tournament. I'm not exactly sure which. It wasn't in the, uh, the text, but it showed up in something, so... Is this an OWC happening? Um, I don't think so. So the pop there's a popular set of this, I think, by Yokespy that gets used in tournaments a bunch, but uh, I don't know which tournament this one was used in. So yeah, well, it was used in something, and we're very happy to have a show here. A very good map. All right. Very true. And we can move on to our first place entry and slider pack. Those slider shapes are nutty. <laughs> what are these trees? <laughs> oh. And in first place, we have uh, Heathens by 21 Pilots. This is a map set hosted by Funny, but it's a collab. Uh, so the collab mappers were Funny, Sharu, Zero PP, and Osu, Halgo, Inrotoki, Inro Rorupan, Zar, and Doodle. And the first thing you'll notice about this map is it is extremely flashy on the visuals. You've got lots of really crazy uh, slider constructions. Like these long sliders used for various synth parts in the song uh, to draw a contest. They are nutty. They're, they go all over the place. Wow, yeah, um, 
I, I think I remember when this was uh, actually... I, I think I remember seeing it when it was uploaded. Uh, this is the type of map that uh, tends to get around very quickly uh, once it's made. And I was like, oh yeah, this is probably going to win, uh, you know, the slider tech category this year. So it's just, it's just kind of, you know, if you like this type of style, slider tech, uh, this has the roster of the usual suspects, right? So uh, it's got the song, it's got, you know, the design, it's got all of what you uh, have known to come in love for the style. So Yeah. In particular, I would say Halgo's part in this is, uh, is a real standout to me, just in the shapes he uses and his uh, his flow in general. The movement is really nice in his section, and of course all the other parts are good, but that part in particular really stood out to me. Yeah. So, um, fun fact on this one is the difficulty name in this is Marathon, so that they could get more file size, uh, basically. Um, it's a combination of the storyboard and the hit sounds and all of that stuff, uh, you know, really pushing the limits and requiring the diff name to be switched to Marathon so that the site is like, ah, yes, we can give you more file size. So Very interesting mechanic. I did not know that. Thank you for that fun fact and light tip, Happy. Oh, I love talking about decrepit uh, workarounds that are kind of... Oh, God. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Enough of that. Anyways, oh. thank you to Honey uh, Funny and all of the collab mappers for giving us that. And we can move on to our next category. This is Best Unorthodox Gimmick. And in third place, we have uh, Possession by Tag Underground. This was mapped by Qdex. So the big uh, gimmick, quote unquote, here uh, is there's a section later on where all of the notes are actually double tap doubles. And uh, it's done that way to emulate uh, patterns in the original uh, rhythm games that this came from. So this showed up in DDR and later on 2DX. And in both those sections where the double taps occur, it's all chord patterns. Every single note is a chord pattern. And that's, I believe is, yeah, you can see it right here. So really cool to have like this sort of reference to the uh, games that this uh, song originally came from pop up in an osu map yeah um so it's it's kind of interesting to see this now but it's, a, it's also just like i feel like a natural progression so a couple of years ago we had mappers start to experiment with ranking uh these sort of double taps uh more frequently um there was definitely uh, a couple maps last year a couple of maps um i think in 2019 that came about with that concept so it's nice to have it in this context where it's like homage to a uh you know different set of rhythm games also this is a uh this map could not actually get ranked for a while due to uh all the concerns about pp abuse but one of the bns essentially worked on adjusted the pp system itself so that it would uh so that this map could be ranked so that was fun yeah i heard this got disqualified after the first time i got qualified for that reason very interesting all right, anyways, we can move on to our second place map. And this is going to be... This is Non-Breath Obliged by 15 Voices. And this is mapped by Dallas. So this is... Wow, this is this map really goes off. This is a very pattern-focused map. There's lots of different various patterns. Uh, it's also extremely stamina-heavy alt map. So the most interesting aspect of this map to me is the way it uses uh, pattern repetition in a lot of spaces to emphasize the vocals and the repetition that the singer does in the vocals themselves. I yeah, think that's um, the main uh, sort of gimmick, quote unquote, of this. Yeah, I'm just gonna say, Okoro, this is your fault. Uh, also, yeah, this is this map is um, very. This map definitely, I, I think one of the standouts on this is uh, the usage of the long combos. Uh, to a lot of people, that's pretty unorthodox. Not necessarily as a mechanic, just as a design choice. So the combos yeah. get really long on this one. I think uh, into the hundreds? I can't remember. I'm not sure if any of them get us. Uh, they get close at the very least. There might The one at the end might get over 100. Because it is very long. I know that. Yeah. 
I'd say that uh, part of what I think also what makes this unconventional, it's actually pretty weird from a play perspective just by the nature of how long the chains get, right? So it's like, this part's not so weird, right? It's just, you know, it just jumps for like 100 notes or something, right? But there's some, uh, some patterns later on where they chain together in ways that it's like, if they were separate, it'd just be basic stuff. It, but when you just connect mm -hmm. them all into one long chain, it becomes like something totally different and very weird, so. Yeah, very cool. Thank you to Dallas for our first place on Orthodox gimmick map. Yeah. All right. Or well, second place. Sorry. Anyways, now we can move <laughs> on to the first place on Orthodox oh gimmick God. map. Yes, this is Fall in the Dark by Shibayan featuring Yana, and this was mapped by Uberfast. So the, the you're gonna notice right away that this map is very weird. So all um, the vast majority of the notes are stacked in the very middle of the playfield, uh, with occasional sliders used as jumps to emphasize various notes in the music outside of that. But eighty percent of the time, you're gonna be you're gonna have your cursor straight in the middle, just clicking away. And uh, so the song name is "Fall in the Dark." And if you play this map with 100% DPM, after playing for so long, you kind of get like tunnel vision on this like very center itself. So it's kind of like you're falling in the dark. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh god. What? Um. All right. So yeah. So this map. Uh, we're not gonna get through. It, have it play long enough for you to see the gimmick. Uh, or rather, at least for the part where it deviates. But um, there are some things about this map. First of all, uh, in uh, during COE last year, uh, we had a mapping panel, and this map was brought up on like the concept, on, on like the topic of gimmick maps. So we actually like did an explanation of the gimmick there. The the TLDR is yeah, it's you know it essentially uses a very 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 obvious uh, play playfield gimmick where it's like everything everything for the most part is based around the center. Um, it almost like a hit sound diff so that's part of the joke um and then once you get towards the uh core th there's this one part where the synth goes off and it just kind of goes into not hit sound so it's like this is uh this is actually it actually feels reminiscent of uh maps that were popular in 2017 like uh impulse uh, reloaded etc that had these like mm -hmm. heavily restrictive play field plus visual uh sorts of concepts and then it just turns those up to 11 um, because this has the, I think, I think we brought this up in, this got discussed in internal or something and it was brought up along the lines of, yes, uh, this map has a concept and it shows it off uh, with the subtlety of a sledgehammer or something. I, I think that's what I heard, so. That's a very good way of putting it. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, I'm done being hit by a sledgehammer, so let's get on to that next, uh, next category. I think we have, uh, it's Complex Rhythm and Swing, right? Yes, you would be correct. Complex Rhythm and Swing is next. And in third place, for Best Complex Rhythm and Swing, we have a map by our very own Down. That's right, he not only maps, but he's a, a, a great, uh, song composer as well, and I should say, recent featured artists so this is a uh, drones e coro uh and as you can already tell it's got lots of different beat snaps in here um the coolest thing about this i think is just the way it was color hacks and the, the storyboard in the background although it looks like our recorded skin turned the skin off so you may not be able to see the color hacks but so uh the color hacks is that the colors indicate the various beat snap dividers that was used. So one fourth was black, one fifth was actually green, uh, purple was one sixth, blue was one seventh, yellow was one ninth, and red is one twelfth. And of course, the storyboard is still on, so you can see that in the background. That also correlates to it as well. Interesting. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I. So this is the second time I'm mentioning a coro uh, in this stream, and so all I have to say at this point is. Wow, he had a huge cultural impact because uh, he inspired Down to make uh, a song uh, named after him. Uh, 
So this is actually paying homage to Okoro's ranked set of, uh, I think it would not fall, everything will freeze. And uh, it, that's what that's mm -hmm. where this background comes from. Uh, Okoro ranked that in 2014. Uh, you may notice time freeze. So it was it was paying homage to that map and Okoro's skill set as a player, which is for these very rhythm dense, like complex rhythm, crazy aim control, whatever sorts of maps. So just kind of nice to see all that kind of come together on this one. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, and other maps in this category do similar things as well, but I really appreciate the fact uh, the attention to detail taken in the color hacksing and the storyboarding uh, to make it very consistent. So it always gives the player a bit of help and clue into which beat snap they're actually playing. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, I can't wait to see those features in the rest of the uh, category members of this category. Yes, you're actually going to see it in our very next map as well, in which we have in second place for complex rhythm and swing, which is <laughs> loading. It's coming. It'll come someday. It'll, it, it is on the way. Being delivered to an NCA near you. This feels like queuing for a shooter, not gonna lie. <laughs> RNG queues. <laughs> we're we're just we're just commentating this while we queue for an Apex match, guys. I was uh I was gonna go with a five stack on uh or, or the, like a four stack or something on like Overwatch because no, that's we're... those have so long queue times. You know, we're just doing it doing it up in Apex. Alright, okay. in second place we have Asteroid Field of Deca Decapolis by I L. Um, this map by Devious Panda, um, and again, this shares a similar idea to our last map, which you also cannot see because the skin is unfortunately turned off. So the rhythms in this were color hacks for is easier identification. Um, red and pink was used for uh, one ten snaps, orange for two ten, yellow for three ten, and then everything else was just gray on top of it. So. And of course, Devious Panda is quite well known for these types of maps and songs now. And he always has a very consistent approach to the, the spacing and the color hacksing goes into that to help the player identify the various rhythms they need to play and at which snap. Yeah. Um, so this map, uh, I'd say this is your... Uh, so most of these uh, complex rhythm maps tend to be uh, two minutes or less. Uh, a lot of them is, is... A lot of that is because they uh, tend to come from uh, existing rhythm games or composers that kind of compose in that style. Um, this one is kind of like... This is, this is a lot longer. This is a marathon length uh, rhythm map, which is something extremely uncommon uh, and really could only come up come from someone like uh 2l right um but yeah uh this this one i don't think this anything in this map is necessarily revolutionary right if you know sputnik uh you kind of know what this the tricks of this one is but uh, i think what this one has more of is some of those like really dense 112 uh taps so kind of similar to uh one of the, the underground map that we saw yeah so. yeah it's definitely got the the double tap aspect as well yeah, um, but uh, I think the standout for this one is the song. This is uh, one of the I, one of the two L songs that has a melody, so I think that uh, might have hit with uh, quite a few people. Uh, it definitely hit with me. So it's like same Devious Panda, you know and love. Plus the song is better, so you know it takes those W's. Did this get you that by any chance? I remember mm. Devious Panda's last I L map that we saw in NCA was used in a tournament. I, I don't. This popped up I don't really think well. so. I wasn't sure um, if it did or not. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, it's too. It's usually too long for that, so it'd have to be a really specialized. Yeah. Oh yeah, this true. This is a marathon, so makes sense. All yep. right, well then. Thank you to Devious Panda for our second place complex rhythm and swing, and in first place we have uh, Hokori Yuki by Her Oka, featuring Haruna. So this is mapped by Silver 15. So this is a very interesting map to show up in this category. Um, it's extremely stamina heavy alt map. Um, there's a really interesting design choice. Uh, I believe the song is in 3-4, as you can see by the visual cue of having the 3-4 on the sheet music. But the time signature used in 
the Osu editor itself is actually 9-4, which is a very, very uncommon time signature. This might actually be the only use of it in a ranked map, as far as I can tell. Um, other than that, it's got very small visual spacing overall, um, which kind of functions, it ends up functioning as like keeping the player in sort of sectioned off in various parts of the map at a time. Uh, and it also makes the jumps in it very noticeable when used for emphasis. Uh, it's also got a lot of these like loop back sliders, like right there. Um, these kind of function to keep your cursor just in one section. It's got a lot of... This song is a, a little bit repetitive, so a lot of thought was going into the design to make it a interesting, more interesting. And uh, Zilver 15 really pulled it off here, I would say. Oh yeah, I have to agree. Uh, it's really nice to see uh, Zilver, uh, you know, make his way to uh, the podium on one of these MCAs. Uh, I know he's been kind of making these maps for a while. I think this is the first map of his that we've kind of seen up here. So, uh, congrats to that. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's definitely one of the more repetitive. Uh, it uh, feels like it has a lot of callbacks to like some of the stuff that Hollow Wings does. Uh, you mentioned the whole like you know uh, visual spacing kind of staying very close, so it just kind of like. It, it also just kind of loops around the screen in a way that just kind of drags, and that puts a lot of emphasis for the jumps when they happen. Uh, definitely, that's a callback for uh, the older styles of jumps, where you had lots of DS, 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 and then jumps, and then more DS, and jumps, as opposed to, like, now, where we have, you know, jump sections, and then we have, like, some larger jumps, and then we have some smaller jumps, but it's still just, like, continuous. Uh, this is definitely more in the older style of that, in that sense. So. Yeah. Also a very interesting aspect of the, the style here he used is there's very little like straight sliders. Almost everything is a curve. Oh, Zilver. Uh, <laughs> I, I always love that because that's one of my style biases as well. So that's cool. But it does also make the straight slit stand out quite a bit more when yeah, they are absolutely. used. Because they're just, they're there. You just got to look for them. Yeah. Anyways, thank you very much to Zilver for our first place complex rhythm and swing map. And with that, we can get into our next category. So this is best small circles, and we've got a map set that has shown up previously in this category, but not the same map. This is Non-Breath Obliged by 15 Voices, hosted by Dallas, and this map itself is by Toybot. So a lot of this map is actually, I would say it uses similar concepts in a way to the Dallas div, but they're much less extreme here. So uh, there's a lot of re repetition in the patterns in certain parts used to emphasize the vocals. He does that as well as Dallas. And overall, just it shares a lot of themes and elements with that map. But with small circles. Yeah, um, all right. So yeah, so small circle wise, I think uh, this map is this map isn't like doing too much revolutionary, but I think it's uh, what it is doing revolutionary. I think is just like the way it uses aim control. Um, in general, it's really hard to pull that off in a way that doesn't feel super forced on small circles, mm -hmm. uh, as anyone who's ever played hard rock, uh, like tech maps on hard rock, can attest to, right? So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of nice to see that well executed here. Absolutely. Right. Anything else think... to add about this one? Nope. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to hear the song uh, more, so uh, may as well uh, yeah, save my ears. It, it could happen. You, you might see it a, a, a couple more times. We'll see. Anyways, we can now get into our second place map in Small Circles. And I'm really excited that this map is showing up here. I'm so glad you guys voted for this. So we have, oh god, uh, this name is really hard to pronounce. M Mok I got you. I got you. Go uh, Mike Lee is Thank I don't you. know if that's actually correct, but that's how I say it every time. So this map is hosted by Ray Jodo, and this is a map by Sporosive, also known as Rustwell. I'm so happy he gets to show up in this category. Uh, this was originally mapped in 2011. Uh, it's a very alt-heavy map, as you can see. 
uh, reminds me a lot, particularly in the styling and patterning of the old uh, Suka and Kidley style maps from around that same time. So uh, it's got a lot of alt patterns with a uh, heavy flow emphasis and it's just really cool to see here. Yeah, Um. so this is really just showing how it's just like old rhythm choice, uh, old style rhythm choice really can work. Uh, he was making it work really well here. Um. In terms of like, so I, I like this, I like basically, uh, I like a lot of the stuff dips on this set, um, but it's like, this one I think is the highest quality one, for sure. Um, even, it, it's, and it's still very interesting as well, so it's just like, a lot of the times it's like, you make like the most polished dip on a set, but it may not have interesting stuff. This one's got it all. This one has polish, and it's got ideas, and it's really nice and refreshing to see this, uh, and it's crazy that this was made in 2011. You know, it's winning an award show 12 years later, right? So that's, yeah, uh... I, this, this doesn't... I mean, it doesn't even look like an old map from 2011. The styling is very... It fits in with modern standards, for sure. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, that... Thank you to Sporosif and uh, Russ Bell for giving us that. And then we can go on to our first place map. This is Agony by Kotoko, and this is map by Moonpoint. Uh, you may know him better as Apollo, uh, recently name change. So the big thing about this is it's CS10. Um, so, and because of the circles being so small, it shares a lot of similarities with uh, the map that won 2021 in CA, Small Circles. It was a very chill map that was CS9. Uh, so the small circles function to keep the players kind of sectioned off in these various like quadrants of the map at a time and then you kind of end up having like transitions between the various like parts of the map so you get like streams that kind of transport you to a different section uh, very long spaced out difficult streams for this considering it's CS10 and this is also key sounded as well Wow, uh, high effort CS10, right? Uh, that's crazy. Uh, so just to think about it, just a couple of years ago, you couldn't even rank, um, you couldn't even rank this, like, setting, and now it's winning an award show. That is, you know, hats off to you, uh, Moonpoint. Um, yeah, definitely. Like, the small, the really, really small circle category, which would be, I would consider, like, CS8 and up, has come a, a long way over the years. Yeah, um, it's also, by the way, I will say that this, uh, this, this song, like, has, has a history of just being mapped in these small circle styles. I'm, I believe, like, uh, a K, KSO map of this was ranked, you know, like, way back when, 2009, like, yeah, this a is lot a of very maps. classic Osu song. This has been around for a while. Yeah, and it's just, like, if you know the maps back then, it's, like, people were mapping... All, all setting six, like CS six was uh, kind of on that. So this feels like you know a refresh of that, while still like paying homage to that. So I kind of appreciate that. Um, we do something different, but it references you know the history of mm -hmm. on this game. So kind of nice to see that. Absolutely. Thank you very much to Apollo slash Moonpoint for bringing us our best small circles winner. And now we can go on to Best Vanilla, and in third place we have this map, Gangnam Style uh, by Sai and map by Shogun Moon 00999. Um, yeah. What year this, is this? This is this current year. Um, the vanilla aspect of this might be a bit suspect. It's got a lot of. Uh, it's very heavily slider based. It's got lots of SV changes. And of course, our, our play tester is having a lot of fun drawing stuff on screen. Um, yeah, uh, it's also hit sounded and key sounded by Visionary, who did a, a nice job on the hit sounds, but not sure how I feel about the vanillaness of this match. <laughs> I'm being honest. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, well, so, here's the thing. I guess it's uh, a good time to mention just, like, the general trend of, you know, more normal maps uh, having more and more sliders in them uh, and just having more of the focus. Uh, just because when you think of, like, 
at the top end, it's like you have this like the slider tech stuff being really popular, um, and that's definitely influencing uh, just the general populace. It or the trend has been going on for a couple of years, and I think this is an effect of it, where you start seeing maps like this uh, in the vanilla category. True. So. This is, and I will say the uh, slider tech aspects of this are pretty standard. Like the slider shapes are very straightforward. There's nothing really funky going on with those. So maybe I'm just, you know, I'm just the boomer and this is like the moment that's making me feel old and telling me, you know, I'm a grandpa on the lawn right now. Well, you're not, I'm just saying you're not the only boomer on in this voice chat. So <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> I think we can get on to the next one. All right. In second place, we have a map by Mirage. And Oh, there we go. So this is uh, All the Joy in Life Was Gone Once You Left by Sewer Svilt. Um, this was mapped by Mirage. So things that stand out to me about this map, uh, the spacing is very compressed. This, uh, this is a very stamina heavy, like streamy map. Uh, the map itself has basically like three elements in terms of design. Uh, it's got a uh, straight or angled sliders pretty much exclusively so there are like zero curves in this uh, straight kick sliders and streams and that's basically it yeah all right yeah um now this is definitely like as far as uh you know stuff that i stuff that used to be weird getting normalized this is definitely an interesting one so it's just i uh like Back when like I saw uh, Mirage like starting to make headway, um, and they kind of came into their own as a mapper, uh, I you know they were they were making like their style was considered weird, like that Russian like evil Elvis sort of st style. That was that was weird, and now it's like it's been around for so many years with such consistency, being replicated by so many by uh, enough mappers that it's like it's normalized now. So even these like you know like weird like. All, not quite cuts, but almost cuts and wiggles in these streams are uh, pretty normal now. So I'd say this is just like, it just kind of just shows how like fluid definitions like vanilla really get, right? Like this is, but back yeah, in my true. day, this is definitely not vanilla. This is like, this is a gimmick map, right? Like this is the type of thing that like, I'd be able to play in a tournament against someone else and they wouldn't be able to play it because it's unreadable. Now it's just normal. So. Yeah, this is certainly the category I would say that is most up to interpretation by uh, voters and nominators. Yeah. Also, this has like a really, really huge stamina inducing stream at the end. It's, it's like multiple hundreds of notes. Oh man. That's 160 BPM, so you can use this in your. ET tournament maps, maybe. It's okay. You can't. It's okay. It looks like as long as it follows the spacing, uh, it's double tappable, I believe. True. Anyways, thank you to Mirage for our second place best vanilla entry, and with that, we can move on to our first place entry. And in first place, we have a map by Gilstar, and this is Gyako by Soshi Sakiyama. So. This is really interesting to finally see Gilsar show up in uh, MCA. I believe this is the first time I've seen him, at least over the past three years. And But he is a very pop-off mapper. He's got um, very nice patterning in this map, space usage, movement. It's, this map is just kind of like the overall package to me. Good styling, just... It's got it all. Yeah, so this def this feels like a fusion of the past two maps we saw. Um, again, like, and you know, if, if it's like before stuff that I would never expected in any universe to be vanilla, it's like that's just where we're at now. Like, mapping has evolved. Uh, you know, what is uh what is normal has absolutely evolved. I think these maps show that the most. Um, it was definitely trending towards that last year, but now it's you know really pronounced. Yeah, this is also it's got a lot of. Kalibe aesthetic uh, in, uh, vibes, at least, and that sort of mapping has really, really become 
popular over the years. Well, thanks, Kalibe, for normalizing Wiggles. <laughs> I always love seeing Kalibre. those. Anything else you want to say about this one? That sucks. I think uh, I think I think I'm good. Like you know, a Gilstar map kind of speaks for itself. So that's true. <laughs> right. Well, thank you, to Gilstar, for our best vanilla number one winner. And with that, we can move on to our next category: uh, best high BPM alternator. And in third pl place, we have a map by Saros. So this is a very interesting uh, one for this category. Uh, Saros, of course, won bet most promising in MCA 2021. So we are kind of seeing the, the fruit of his labor now over the past year after winning that. Um, I think the, the key eyes in this are very interesting. So uh, this... The slider movement and construction in the ki is very heavily glow aimed, uh, used to emphasize various patterns in the vocals. And then when the uh, singer starts switching to these like rapid fire um, words, uh, it switches to more linear note based patterns. So there's a lot of different uh, pattern choices and design that are used to emphasize various parts of the music here. It's very heavily based around the vocals. Yeah, um, Goddish really was the song of last year, right? Like, you know, we saw obviously the the Bing chilling-ish, uh, and now we're seeing, you know, the Sekai cover, the, an actual, like, not meme. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty interesting to see that. Um, also, shoutouts to uh, Seros for making this originally for Corsair's Closed, uh, round of 16, no mod 3, so that's an alt map, earliest round. So that's cool sure, to see. You have uh, a lot of experience with this, I guess. Yeah. I think they're Corsairs. You know a little bit about Corsairs, so... <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a bit. <laughs> Alright, uh, I think that's enough about this one, though. Yep, and we can move on to our second place entry for High BPM Alternator, and it's a map you've already seen before. It's not gonna be a surprise to you. In second place, we have Nathana... <laughs> Breath of Lies by 50 Voices. The the Della Sip is coming back here, and what can we say about this that we haven't already said? Uh, I don't think anything, if I'm gonna be honest. It's it's if it's the BPM and uh people seem to like it because it also uh was placing it in another category. I, <laughs> I <don't... laughs> absolutely everything we said about it before applies again. Uh, very stamina heavy alt map, lots of repetition patterns. It's it's great. Thank you, Dallas, for a second place. <laughs> anyway, All right, and uh, yeah, we go next. <laughs> yep, pretty much. So in first place, we for our high BPM slash alternator, we have a map by Ryusei Aika, and I'm I'm sure you have an idea just based off me saying that what it's gonna be. It's a song we've already heard, but in a different version. It's Goddish. This time, it's Vocaloid version, the original. <laughs> So this map is a lot, basically it's like an Osu Greatest Hits record to me. There's lots of patterns and various sliders from the, uh, famous other older maps. You of course saw the Dorchata slider in the beginning. Uh -huh. There's stuff like patterns from Sin in here. Uh, there's there's a Halgo section. Uh, there's stuff from Tatamai, there's there's a Zara slider, at the end is like a big homage to Kreutz's Fallen. It's 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 pretty nutty. Basically, this is Ryusei Aika on uh, his Skystar arc, uh, and you guys are dirty dirty enablers, but here you go! <laughs> it really is a greatest hits collection, so. Oh. Yeah, I don't know, like, yeah, this was definitely a song, like, that's kind of what I was alluding to there, right? That's like, you know, God is taking third place, you know, God is taking first place, you know, it's, more, it's all it's all the same, right? Uh, you know, it's just... Oh, <laughs> uh, God is Awards 2022, right? That's, that's all I really have to say on this one, it's just like... I will say that Ryusei Aika really knows his intended target audience for this. It's scary. It's too scary. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, thank you to Ryusei Aika for our first place 
high BPM alternator map. And with that in mind, we can move on to our next category, best collab. And in Oof. third place, we have uh, the Taishi App Team Songs Compilation. And this is a compilation of various songs from diverse system, compledge, and waveform. So all of those are Japanese doujin groups uh, with various EDM styles. And uh, this was hosted by uh, Tochi, uh, but there's a this is a collab of a, over 50 different mappers participated in this. Um, the the song construction itself is very interesting. They they took a lot of different songs from this, chopped them up. And they sequence them together in a way that really kind of flows into each other. I really, really like the way they uh, did the song aspect of this. It's of course also, it's got some key sounding. The hit sounds were done by MCK. Really great hit sounder. Love to see more from him in this. Um, Linz, Cosmico, and Holland. And of course, it's a very heavily tech map. Uh, styled and flavored. Yeah, um, these sorts of things always harken back to uh, stuff like um, stuff like th like there's just like all these all these tech collabs that used to get ranked. Uh, I'm thinking of like the one that pops to mind is like this Camellia Mega collabs. Uh, the one that like I think Planet Shaper is the first name that popped in my head. I'm old, okay, like <laughs> but like these style like. This is just like a time-honored Osu tradition, and it's just like the only way you make it, you know, pay more homage is you scale it up. You 10x the mappers, uh, you know, you uh, crank the style up to more modern, uh, you know, expectations, and you know, this is the map you get, right? So it's like 50 mappers, uh, 50 peep mappers mapping like a tech style, uh, nothing too crazy though, and uh, yeah, it's on a banger. Um. Another interesting aspect of this is the way the mappers were chosen for the different parts. So this is split in, up into groups of mappers, both by the overall styling they wanted, as well as the, the song that they cover. Um, so this right here is the group one. They, they did the first song and then, you know, second song, group two and onwards. So the, the, the groupings themselves and the way they chose those to get the styles they wanted was actually a really interesting aspect of it as well. Yeah. Oh, there's also a really standout part on this later on by Yugu that I want to shout out just because of how absolutely cracked it is. Just lots of different uh, really interesting and cool creative patterns in it. And in second place, we have Tsubasa Okudasai by Shimotsuki Haruka. This is mapped by Misho. Um, and this is a very interesting song to show up in this category. It's got very unorthodox styling. Um, yeah. Okay. What are your thoughts on this, Happy? Um. Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually not too familiar with these mappers. Uh, I will say I've seen Misho around. Uh, I think this is like when I started seeing them. Uh, Otherwise, I didn't see much of them in 2021. Uh, but yeah, Misho uh, has a, uh, I'd say, a bit of an interesting style. Uh, on the, I'd say to me, like on the safer side, but uh, you know, varies a lot more in terms of like the aesthetic and just the general song choice and vibe. So. Yeah, it's very much, I would say, in kind of like some of the Russian style wheelhouse like this reminds me a lot of like the sort of styling that like mappers like kuyusu would do with the very unconventional uh slider shape and aesthetic choices oh no that's a mapper i know uh they were they were doing some stuff i think uh misho is much more restrained than kuyusu <laughs> i mean yeah yes m much more restrained but it does kind of have like it reminds me a bit of it for sure. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh it's chilling. Uh map is chilling. It's uh it's got some interesting stuff, so you won't fall asleep playing it. Uh but other than that, it won't be too jarring to play. So yeah, cool. Also the the map styling really kind of fits the song, which itself is unorthodox and weird. It it's very unusual as a song. So 
props to Misho for for the choices they made and the math they made. It's pretty good. Check it out. All right. And in first place for best collab, we have yet again a map you have already seen popping up. It's Heathens by 21 Pilots, hosted by Funny, the, the collab, and what more can we say about this one as well? Next. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this is pretty much a situation where we've already covered this, we've said quite a bit about it already. We acknowledge that, you know, it's in this category, it came in first, it's time to go next. Yep. A again, time on a tradition, you know, you cram a bunch of tech mappers in, you get them on a marathon, and you get them to go, and that's what this is, so. Yep, absolutely. Thank you to Funny and all the collab mappers for our best collab first place. Alright, and in our next category, we have best marathon. Next! Nope, nope, no, <laughs> we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> Skip! <laughs> it's so wow, I'm glad these... it's the best marathon! Yeah, it's so funny that these came back to that. Is it funny because the host, the, the, the mapper host is funny, or because the diff name is Marathon? That's the real Reference. question. You gotta ask the real questions. <laughs> So yes, thank you to Funny and the uh, Heathens collab mappers for our best marathon third place as well. So in second place, we also have yet again another map you've already just seen. It's the Tai Chi Afternoon Songs compilation hosted by Toji and of course the 50 plus mappers that participated in it. Thank you very much again for our second place entry. We need to move on. Yes, we do. Uh, at least, but I will say this one's not as funny and it's not as marathon. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, um, yeah. Okay, so in first place, we have a really, really cool map to come in this category. So this We got is some technical difficulties, though. So let's uh, get those resolved before That's we have uh, that winner. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is the Toho 10 nonstop melody from Zune, hosted... Uh, by uh, map by Lucent. So the really crazy part about this is uh, the storyboard, I would say, is the most interesting aspect. Of course, the map itself is excellent, uh, but the storyboard is basically a recreation of the Toho games in storyboard form. Absolutely insane amount of work and effort that Lucent put in to make this. Um, and of course, the map itself, it's, it very much so apes the old styling of maps from this era that map these Toho songs. So it's really cool to see him reference that and bring it back in a very cool storyboard form. Uh, yeah, so I don't usually get emotional about maps, but this one does it to me. Um, like, especially because, like, he recreated the game, like, this is... I, I look. I still just like like watching this storyboard reminds me of like the days that I fired up Toho. Like you know, you would get it off some like you get some shady places. You'd like unraw everything, and then you'd get these games going because you couldn't buy them anywhere. It's right. like nowadays you can buy this stuff on Steam, and it's really cool. But yeah, he absolutely like nailed it. Right? It's like Toho's been ar Toho music's been around. You know, basically as long as anime music in Osu has been around. You know, this is, uh, and just seeing this, like, this whole thing recreated in storyboard form is insane. Like, we saw some pandering towards this, I'd say, with, uh, a storyboard by Amitrin on, like, a Lulu set in 2019 or something. And I thought that was cool, but that was only just, like, recreating, like, a, uh, like, one stage. This is, like, the whole game. Like, this is the stages, this is the bosses, this is everything. Like, it is just insane to see this happen so uh i'm not just uh by the way i am a toho fan uh, i don't know if uh, that was clear but um we, we yeah, should tell I'm... a little bit based off your uh fanboying but it's okay. yeah uh, toho's a great game yeah yeah also this one uh mca storyboard as well so uh that was cool yes very cool and thank you to lucent for our best marathon first place we gotta go next before I keep fangirling. Yeah, and um, then now we can go on to our user category. That's right, we're gonna have the Grand Awards last. So this is our Outstanding Contributor category. And in third place, we have Ryusei Aika. He is, of course, a perennial... 
he shows up a lot in this category. Um, so for you say Aika, he's multi-talented, of course, great mapper. He also does a lot of work with the BN on the BN side, lots of modding, lots of uh, nominating. Uh, I believe he was elite nominator at some point in 2022. So he, he does a lot of work on the modding side as well. Yeah, um, I think, uh, I think though, like, one of the reasons he shows up in a category like this is, like, what he does, like, the maps that he, like, provides, um, I think he really just contributes a lot of content for the game. So, like, if you want, like, some no something novel, something that's, like, aware of, like, what people, like, kind of want to see and are interested in seeing and all of that, Ika is always there for that. And, yeah, on top of that, very great steward of the community. Um, you know, not definitely, like, I don't know, not, uh, not like one of those larger figures that, you know, occasionally has, like, some trouble about them. They're, like, generally also very well perceived, like, they just don't do it too much, they don't do too much acting out, like, except mm -hmm. for the maps, of course. <laughs> but yeah, and it's always nice to see them, so congrats, Aika. Yep, thank you, Aika, as our third place outstanding contributor. And in second place, we have... So this is Moonpoint, also known as Apollo. So, of course, Apollo slash Moonpoint does a lot of work on the B inside. Lots of nominating, lots of modding. But you may know him in particular for another recent contribution to the community, which has become very popular recently. He is the man and force behind ONDB, our own... Um, any list of uh, mall for those two maps, that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, OMDB, um, to me, like, all right, so we've had, we've had user ratings, uh, we've had, you know, like, Twitter, and we just had, like, a bunch of means of, like, rating stuff that just was not really effective and didn't exactly bring, like, us together as a community. Uh, OMDB, I'd say, solved a lot of problems in that regard. Uh, it has, like, a bunch of modes, like the random mode, where you can just see a random map, and, like, you download it and you rate it, you read the comments, like, it's like, you, like, it's like YouTube-style comments, where you're just, like, interacting with people, but you kind of know the people, so people just saying whatever, whatever's on their mind, but they're also, like, looking at what other people are looking at, which I think is extremely healthy for the game, just because it's nice to see people actually looking at things that are not just their, uh, you know, curated feeds, like you kind of get with Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. Twitter, it's like, you want to see certain types of mappers giving you certain types of maps, well, they are, uh, you, you can just subscribe to them and you'll see them because they're going to be posting previews or whatever. OMDB, it's like, this is everything. And it's just like, you get to see what, particularly, it gets people looking at older stuff that they may not have looked over. You know, we've had a lot of growth in the community in the past couple of years. And so yeah. some people don't know, like, the maps that me and Kisada are familiar with, for example. The maps that moved us to start mapping and, like, do things and stuff we really enjoyed. But OMDB gets people looking towards stuff like that. It's like, why is this stuff rated so high? And then people ask, and then, you know, you sh ask and you shall receive because everyone loves talking about maps. So, yeah, well-deserved. Thank you. Thank you for that, Moonpoint. Yeah, definitely. We were... We're absolutely lacking this kind of service and basically crying out for it for a number of years. Um, in particular, given how the OSU site's rating system and ways to find content around that are so lacking. So it's really nice to finally have a, a tool like that. Yeah, um, also our, uh, our very own uh, Vinxis is an avid fan. Uh, don't look at how many ratings he has over on OMDB. Uh, but anyways... <laughs> Too many. Closing off of that, I think we can get on to the uh, number one, right? And of course, it's somebody that shows up in this category quite often, and for deservedly good reason. We have Oli Bombi. Of course, everybody knows him as the creator of mapping tools, which has helped many a mapper over the years. And the worst part about it is he doesn't even map. But 
Uh, we nonetheless really appreciate him. Everything he has done with mapping tools, uh, it is it is a game changer. It is a lifesaver. It is like the editor improvements that you know we never had. Like we didn't even know we needed until we got them. So it's like already had a huge influence on the mapping meta last year. Uh, and I'd say it does. Uh, you know, it'll, oh I wouldn't. I would, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say that its influence uh, in mapping uh, isn't is as big this year, um, just because it's not as novel anymore. But still, amazing utility. Uh, and yeah, let's uh, let's get a glimpse of his uh, project here. Uh. That's insane. Yeah. Um. The fact that you can do this with slider nodes. Oh my god. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> what the heck, dude? I'm, I'm speechless. I'm actually speechless. Oh I, my god. Well, thank you. Thank you, Oli Bobby, for your contributions to the community. Dude, great I love Toho. Well, we gotta get moving. Yeah. Alright, moving onwards to most promising we have in third place. Um, the mapper by the name of Nooch, and this is definitely not a map of his. It's and coming. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get one on screen shortly. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so, yeah. Nooch is an interesting uh, person to pop up in this category, so they are, you know, a very heavily textile-influenced mapper. Um, they have some really nice rhythm choices in their map but very heavily in that tech wheelhouse, for sure. I mean, you can already tell just based off the first slider. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nuj was a name that actually came across my desk uh, actually as recently as yesterday, uh, because we were... We're getting uh we're getting work done on the course base open pools and we're like, huh, we need someone to do this uh you know, this tech thing, right? And uh then Nuj was like the Nuj was sitting there, I'm like, who's this guy? Uh and yeah, I looked at his stuff and definitely uh definitely has a pretty polished, like techish style, uh, which is nice to see. Um it's uh also just it's 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 just weird how the coincidences form that way, right? It's just like you know, you go from, oh, you're seeing them on your desk uh, as, you know, in the sea of mappers to, oh, they're winning most promising. And that's really how it feels like with some of the new newer mappers that come into the community. So, I think also that's just part of us being boomers and that we don't <laughs> uh, have like the discovery aspect as much anymore. So yeah. a, lot of, a lot of newer mappers have probably already heard of people like Nuge. Oh yeah, we're, yeah. We're we're just getting old, happy. Um, I'm, I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm already decrepit. Uh, I need to be buried. Um, yeah. Yep, I've got one foot in the grave already as well. Anyways, thank you to News, our third place, most promising mapper. Moving on to second place, we have a name you've already seen. In fact, very recently. Uh, if we could swap over. <laughs> Okay. All right, here we go. We have Misho, and of course they are the force behind our one of our earlier maps, Tubasa Okudasai. And here we've got a map from them, uh, Dear Future by Kotar the Deeper. So Misho has uh, just, as I stated earlier, very interesting design and stylistic choices from an aesthetic standpoint, for sure. Yeah, um, it's uh pretty cool that they're here. Uh, also, considering they uh they want community choice, they have a community choice badge uh for their participation in uh you know that map. Uh, <laughs> None breath of bleed. So that's kind of cool to see that uh, winning uh, most promising and then getting that badge for last year and that's pretty crazy actually. Like, oof. Yeah, or number two. Absolutely yeah. expecting a lot of things from them going forward. I think we'll see a lot of them in the future. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm definitely for uh, you know 
a Kuyusu type mapper with hinges. Uh, that can work. <laughs> I like how you I like how you phrase that with hinges. With hinges, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, As opposed it's... to the unhinged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, in our first place, we have Bunny, and this is you know this is Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift. So another map by them, of course. Bunny, the driving host force behind our one of our perennial winners this year, Heathens. Um, I think what's interesting to me is, you know, obviously they were on that set and they had a very, you know, really flashy visual style, but their text, and of course they are a tech-based mapper, but their style is, on their other maps is a lot more restrained, especially from a visual and like movement perspective. So it was really interesting seeing the contrast between that and like maps like these. Yeah, I kind of have to agree. Uh, they are uh, they're relatively versatile, so uh, I always like to talk about like the uh, if I'm if I'm talking about like tech uh, and like this these sorts of styles, I always talk about the animated tech pipeline. Uh, and you know, it's just like it's definitely uh, I feel like he went the other way, where it's just, like he really was fascinated with these like you know tech style maps, and then started to learn like how to tone it down to more simple types of maps. Um, I noticed this particularly because he uh, has been somewhat involved in the tournament community in terms of making maps and like I knew him for the tech stuff and then he was making you know much simpler stuff for stuff like OWC later in that year um, and just to kind of to start doing this all in like your first year of mapping or whatever or, or even maybe like having unranked stuff in 2021 to just like ranking stuff in 2022 pretty amazing so you know pretty well deserved congratulations funny another tournament mapper the tournament mapper to mca winner pipeline is alive and well oh yeah and thank you to funny for our first place most promising winner and with that we can move on to our next category this is best hit sounder and in third place we have a map hit sounded by scub domino of course scub domino a perennial participant in mca both on the mapping side and especially the hit sounding side when he won best hit sounder in 2020 and 2021 uh, i would say i stated this earlier but i'm going to restate it again because it's worth saying again scub domino's i think biggest streak that stands out to me is the way he does piano key sounding and he also does stuff like additive hit sounds as well but his piano sampling and the way he tunes it is just really impressive and I would say he's probably the best at that sort of aspect the piano key sounding in Ozu today. Yeah, uh, I'm not surprised to see Scub here. Uh, I've been seeing Scub here for a couple of years now. He's kind of like He's kind of like Vinxus is to an outstanding contributor. So uh, again, cool to see you again here, Scub. But yeah, we Everyone who's been following this show for uh, the past couple of years knows knows Scub Domino. They know Scub Sit Sounds. They know they're good, and uh, it's not like he, he's not he's not getting any worse. I'll tell you that. So congratulations. For sure. Yes, thank you very much to Scub for our third place best hit sounder. And in second place for best hit sounder, we have the opposite. We have somebody who has never showed up in this category before. So we have someone entirely new. And in second place, we have Visionary. So this is a map, not by them, Freaky RGB by Yeek. So lots of key sounding going on here. Lots of really nice samples. Uh, this is their first yeah, appearance in MCA. So really excited to see what we will get from them in the years to come. Yeah, uh, Vision. this is actually the probably one of the first times I've seen Visionary, you know. Uh, yeah, this is, it's again nice to see new faces, so, uh, he's it, the hit sounds are good. <laughs> yep, he's, uh, he's definitely got a lot of, uh, he's got a lot of good sample choices, um, his maps are heavily key sounded, so, he's also very much so in, like, the sort of, like, tech Avalon scene, so, very cool to see a new face. Yeah, I'll definitely say uh, he's got some uh, daring moves, especially when it comes to like swapping out the uh, like soft hit normal, right? Like most people don't swap that out when they hit sounds. Even the people that 
do more embellishment than usual. It's usually a really risky. So to be able to make it work on something like this is pretty good. So well deserved. Congratulations. Yep, absolutely. Thank you to our second place winner, Visionary. And with that, we can move on to our first place winner. And this is somebody that has shown up in NCA hit sounding category before, but they've never won it before. Last year, they were second place. Guess we'll get to find out in a second. The anticipation. The anticipation can't. is killing me. It's yeah. Mid Midori Jian. Um, so, yeah, as I said, they were second place in MCA 2021. Very fabulous key sounder. Heavily based on their maps. So. Great sample choice. Yeah, just all around great. Yeah, um, yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, it's good to see them, uh, you know, take the take the gold this time. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's like it seems like at least for this one, they really kind of nailed the whole Oriental like hit sounding sort of uh, setup uh, pretty well because that that's one of those like sets of, hit sounding setups that's not like revolutionary, but it's also really hard to pull off. So especially when you pull it off in a song like this. Mm -hmm. uh, works out pretty well for you, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool map and cool hit soundings. Thank you to Midori Jion for our first place best hit sounder. And with that, we can move on to our next category, best modern. Lovely song. Yeah, song is good. Didn't even want to like, skip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and in third place, we have Smokeland. And Smokeland, of course, very active as a BN. Uh, lots of nominations. Yeah, so this is one of those guys that uh, he gets the nomination capped uh, because he nominates too much, right? Like, this guy is doing volumes, right? Like, everyone always knows it's like, oh yeah, BNs, you know, they're dead, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, not this guy. This guy is machining through, my, like, he is populating the rank section. So, uh, cool to see that. Uh, I, I can definitely see he's uh, been rewarded in that regard, right? Like, I think for a lot Absolutely. of people, it's very important for, uh, you know, a modder to be... Uh, Ranking lots of stuff. So, uh, yeah, Smokeland definitely did that in 2022. So, you know, congrats. Was he an elite nominator in 2022? I cannot remember. I uh, don't usually too, pay too much attention to that. But. So he was certainly out there with the numbers to get it if he had. Yep. You're correct. Alright, thank you to Smokeland as our third place best modder. And in yeah, second uh, place, we. Oh, is there something you want to add? Oh, yeah, I think he got his three year badge uh, oh, recently. So. Thank you for your three years of service, Smokeland. And speaking mm -hmm. of a BN who has had lots of years of service as well, we have Mirash in second place. He, of course, does lots of work as a BN, lots of nominations, lots of um, different styles he nominates as well. Which is always really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Mirage also got elite nominator and uh, also is now on year four. So I still remember like this. I still remember when Mirage got BN. It's kind of crazy to think it's been four years, but alas, here we are. So Russian congratulations, Mirage. Really coming out strong in the best modder category. Yeah, uh, I think also what I like to see is uh, Mirage uh, enjoys quite a bit of variety. Uh, so like, not not a singular genre. Uh, it's like more a larger subset uh, and still maintaining a relatively high amount of activity. So yeah, I, really I always that. I always appreciate the the BNs who are kind of just all over the place and don't have like a specific style or group of mappers that they sort of cue to. So it's really nice to see the community like rewarding that. And that's something that both Mirage and actually Smokeland as well have done, so. That's nice. Nice just like this man. Thank you, Mirage, True. for our second place best modder. And in first place, we have Riffy uh, as our best modder winner. And it, what more to say, it wasn't even close. He absolutely, they absolutely crushed the first choice count. This is the highest amount of first choices I 
ever seen for any category or of map or user. Wow, absolutely insane. Yeah, um, so Riffy, again, like, he's one of those, B he's one of those, uh, BNs that really, really pushed, like, lots of huge volumes of stuff. Uh, his thing in particular is he brought a lot of mappers into the community. So, um, I think a lot of them, you know, like, a lot of first ranks and such, uh, definitely probably came from Riffy. And so we can definitely see that, I think, with the, with the choices, it's just like, you know, Another, he's also another BN who is very stylistically diverse in terms of what they nominate, so just kind of all over the place there. Yeah, so yeah, congrats, Riffy. I uh, think now we can uh, talk, get, talk, get to talking about the best mapper. Yes, we can move on to our best mapper category. We're getting close to the end, guys. We've got three left. And in third place, we have Lucent, of course. Really happy to see Lucent in this category. Um, he's he's had a couple maps show up before in NCA in the previous years, but I think this is this may be the first time he's won something outright in a category. And now to have him show up in the best mapper category, I don't just thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I second that. Like. Lucian, okay, let, like, usually, usually it's like, with this category, you have a lot of people that, you know, they're not, they, they, they like, have a niche, right, and they fo just focus on that. Lucian does everything, like, look at this, like, I think, like, I know him a lot for, like, you know, making, like, the, you know, pretty comfy and sane, or, like, remasters of old songs that are, like, uh, you know, just, yeah, he, he does, like, a lot of that sort of stuff, but basically Lucian, like, he makes a good map of every song he touches, doesn't matter what it is, uh, very consistent, very high volume of maps, uh, and it's, it's fresh, like, yeah, congrats, Lucian. I still remember, again, boomer moments, remember when this guy was getting into mapping, and, like, he's come a long way, so really nice to see him on the podium here. Congrats, Lucian, and thanks. Yeah, he's been, especially in, like, sort of the, like, older styles of maps being influenced by this lately and trying to, like, sort of ape that style. So it's really cool to see someone like that come out in our best mapper category. Alright, and with that, we can move on to our second place best mapper. The guy you've already seen, of course, it's Ryusei Aika. I mean, what more can we really say about him? The multi-talented mapper, modder, BN... He does it all. I think I actually do have one thing to say. One other thing to say. Uh, Go for it. I mentioned before how uh, I how like this is like the greatest hits like you know Sky Star like sort of compilation type map. Uh, I think really that epitomizes Ika as a uh, as a mapper. Um, and he basically it's safe to say at this point that he's our generation like this generation Sky Star right like the person yeah. that is giving us huge volumes, lots of different types of stuff, you know, doesn't really seem to care whether it's like, you know, it, it's like the best map ever every single time. Like he just putting putting stuff out there, really moving the community forward and in, in, in terms of stuff. That's kind of what Ika does. Uh, and again, nice to see Ika again this year uh, in that regard. Keep it up. Really appreciate you. So. Absolutely. Thank you to Ika for our second place best mapper. All right, and that just leaves one more. It's first place, and it's Mirash. I'm actually so happy to see Mirash here. I did not expect this at all, but thank you so much, voters. Yeah, Mirash, this is a bit of a surprise. Mapper. Wow. Yeah, I, I we have we already qu talked quite a bit about Mirash uh, at this point. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's move on to the uh, Grand Award, I believe. Yep, we've got our Grand Award for Users next. Our penultimate category for tonight. Of course, while we wait and see this lovely Mirage map. All right, in third place, we have yet again 
This Mirage again? Oh, wow! Yep, it's a tie for third place. So Mirage came in third place, uh, tied with another user. And, of course, very happy to see him pop up again in the Grand Award after winning Best Mapper. I mean, look, coming up in Best Mapper and Best Modder, it's just like, you just, you're just built for this category at this point, Mirage, so... <laughs> All right. We got to see a lot of different maps from him. Today. Yeah, for sure. All right. With that, we can move on to our second place, or tie for third place, I need to remember. A grand Award is, of course, it's, you know, perennial grand award, user category participant, Pishy Fat. Thanks again to everything he has done for the mapping community, all of his guides, his videos, his work as a NAT, his work as featured artist, really the man does it all. Yeah, um, yeah, good to see you again here, Pishy. Uh, <laughs> oh, um, yeah, there's not really much to say here. Uh, he doesn't, uh, he maps, he makes a map like once in a blue moon. Um, but I think, uh, Kisada really mentioned like all the be behind the scenes stuff that he does. I think recently he's been also making a, uh, website for, uh, mentorship, so... Um, if you see a website uh, getting deployed anytime soon for mentorship, uh, you know, you know, it's got the man's name on it. So keep an yeah, eye out for that. Definitely, definitely, he's here more for his contributions to the community as a whole rather than mapping this year. Not to say you know he's a he's obviously a good mapper, but his community contributions are second to none. Yeah. All right, moving on to our grand award second place. It's another familiar face. You know him. You love him. It's our very own... Vinxus! Of course, Vinxus is known for all of the stuff he does with Corsace. We would not have an MCA without him. Or Corsace Open or Corsace Close. Of course, Vinxus is also a prolific BN. Featured artist, mapper. He's, again, he's one of those people that do it all. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so it's just like I believe right at the uh, he, yeah, basically like you guys know Vinxus at this point. So not much to talk about. Uh, he came he uh, came out with this map, uh, which I thought was one of his better maps um in last year. So it's really nice to see his evolution as a mapper along with this because before it's like you always knew him for his country contributions to the community, right? But like. Mapping, it, he, he's, he's definitely gone through the uh, an improvement arc, right? Like, it is, uh, it's not like his stuff was, uh, you know, bad or anything before. It's just that you can definitely see that it's get, get, just keeps getting better and better over as the years come out. So, culminating something like Kaika, uh, really nice to see. Uh, congrats on this one, Vinxus. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And with that, we have to move on to our first place grand award winner. And of course, yet again, it's a familiar face. It's Ryusei Aika, deserved winner. Of course, here being much more of a mapper. Of course, he has lots of community contributions as well. But on the mapping side, he is no slouch. Great to see him here in grand award. Yeah, um, hard to say more about Ika at this point, though, I will say. Yeah, we really talked about him a lot today. I, and I feel, I feel we talk about him a lot every NCA, to be honest. It's always different, th different things, though. The years go by. True, true. <laughs> that's true. Anyways, thank you, Ika, to our first place Grand Award winner. And we have our Grand Award map category. And in second place, a tie for second, I should say, our first map is uh, Misho's Tsubasa Okudasai, a map we have already seen a fair amount of up until this point. Yeah, so we already talked about this one uh, with the collab, so not much more to really add on this one. Um, I think though this, I think it's definitely a combination of the song plus the mapping uh, on this one, just because it's like this song is really unique for a Shimotsuki Haruka song. It's not the type of thing I expect. I expect like you know 
I, I, I don't know. I have uh, different expectations for Shimotsuki Haruka than I do for a song like this, so... Um, Whatever my expectations of her songs are, they're definitely not this. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool stuff. Cool song. Mapped in a cool way. Mapped pretty accessibly, so most people can play it. Nothing else to say here, so... Yep. Alright, moving on to our other second place tie entry. We have the... Taishi App Team Songs Compilation by Tochi and his merry band of 50 different collab mappers. Thank you, Tochi, for this wonderful collab on songs from Diverse System Complex and Waveform. Mega compilations are in this year, right? Like, uh, I think uh, other modes, uh, Choice Awards also had kind of like these kinds of like big compilations uh, take a lot of uh, these top podium spots. So, yep, definitely a trend this year. For all sure. right, but which trend wins it all? That's what I want to know. Yeah, that's very true. With our second place out of the way, we can go on to our first place grand award in the map category. And, I'll just, and it is a map we have seen before. It's Gyaku by Gilstar. Ah, yes. The winner of uh, Vanilla wins it all. I see it. I get it. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I'm, I'm rather surprised by this coming in first for Grand Award. Not not that it doesn't deserve it. It is absolutely a great map, and I believe I also voted for this, but I'm definitely surprised to take it, see it take it all home. Yeah, I mean, well, like I, like I said like earlier, uh, you know, song choice really uh, means a lot when it comes to this, uh, and this song bangs. Like, I think you pretty much anyone like you know even if they're not like huge weebs or whatever they'll probably agree that like this is this is a this is a really good song so being that that way uh you know you have the signature gil star like aesthetics um and then it's just the gameplay is nothing too crazy so you know everyone could play this that's really nice to see so yeah congrats just an all around fantastic map Alright, that and with that we have no other categories, so how do you feel about the results this year, Happy? Yeah, um so 2022, like in uh conversations I've had about you know 2022, most people did not know well, how to how to feel about it. Um and I think it's like this year like with the uh awards this year, we saw a lot more towards like not necessarily outstanding like single point like revolutionary maps that we had in like years past like 2018 2017 mm -hmm. 2019 2016 even but it's just more of just like stuff that's just generally good uh generally has introduced like a fresh song like it's that, that sort of combination saw a lot of familiar names that we saw in previous years but not necessarily were like the biggest standouts just like generally good um it reminds me a lot of 2017 mca actually um so for a historical parallel yeah absolutely i would say i think there were a few surprises here but overall i wasn't as surprised as previous years i think there was, the results this time were definitely a lot more of the maps that i thought would do well for sure you might just be getting better at guessing what people like <laughs> that's true but i think it does it is part of that trend that you talked about towards more like maps that are just overall very good rather than like actually pushing like some new revolutionary idea yeah, for sure. Okay, I think uh, I think that's uh, that's all we got today. Uh, so, any final thoughts? I think I just gave them. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for voting. And yeah, we'll see you all next year for MCA 2024. Hopefully, same time next year. That's uh, kind of the goal. Actually, maybe even a week earlier because apparently this MCA was slightly late, <laughs> even though it definitely didn't feel like it. So, uh, yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you to everyone in the staff who helped make this come together, all the voters, all the nominators, and all the mappers themselves, as well as all the winners. Thank you again, guys, and have a good night. Yeah, and uh, if you want to help out with uh, making Corsace what it is, uh, you know, just feel free to contact us in the Discord. So.
doesn't matter oh, yeah. if, whether it's for MCA, whether it's for Full Circle, whether it's for Course Days Open, Course Days Closed, doesn't matter. Anything. We are always looking for more helpers. Yeah. All right. Have a good night, everybody.